So as Russian troops head into Ukraine, the question is, why is Russia invading Ukraine? Well, here's what you need to know. My name is Nate Delore. If you are new here, we talk about the law and the facts. If you are about that life, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel. So to understand the why, we need to understand the history of the situation. So here's a quick history lesson to get us all up to speed. Ukraine is a country located in Eastern Europe. Bordered by seven countries, it is slightly smaller than the state of Texas. Ukraine has a long and complicated history with its neighbor to the east, Russia. To help explain, we asked our pal Michael Beschloss, NBC News presidential historian. Ukraine used to be part of the country that we now know as Russia. It split off about 30 years ago. Russia used to be part of something called the Soviet Union, which for about half a century was one of the most powerful countries in the world, and Ukraine was a part of that country. But in 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed, and Ukraine gained full independence. The leader of Russia, Vladimir Putin, has always been uncomfortable with the fact that Ukraine split off from Russia. He worries that it's hostile to him. He would like to create a grand Russia that's very powerful, of which Ukraine is a part. So this is Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia. Now, to understand why Russia is invading Ukraine, you got to understand how Russia makes its money. The Associated Press reports that the Russian economy is heavily dependent on fossil fuels, which accounts for about 60% of the country's exports. Now, most of you are probably shocked that Russia actually produces more oil than Saudi Arabia, the king of OPEC. Now, here is a chart of Russian exports. Now, each box is a particular item that's exported by Russia. This is crude petroleum. Now, this highlighted box is where Russia makes the bulk of its money from crude petroleum to refined gas to natural gas. What you're looking at is 60% of Russian exports to the world. Now, what you have to understand is that roughly 40% of Russia's federal budget revenues, the money that they generate, comes from oil alone. This has made Vladimir Putin a very, very rich man. Here's Vladimir Putin compared to America's richest president, Donald Trump. As you can see, Vladimir Putin's personal wealth is at $200 billion, and the source of his wealth is shares in oil and gas. And also, his friends are rich too. These are Russian billionaires, and they make their money from the sale of oil and gas. But now, just because you have all these natural resources, who are you selling them to? How is he making this money? Well, he's selling them to the European Union. See, Europe is addicted to Russian oil. Three out of the top 10 suppliers to the Europeans are Russian. This chart shows the majority of Russian oil goes to European countries. And what about natural gas? Well, this chart is from 2014, and it shows that Europe gets 30% of its natural gas from Russia. 40% goes to Germany, 18% goes to France, 20% goes to Italy. And now as of 2020, Europe actually receives 40% of its natural gas from Russia. So Vladimir Putin sells all of this wonderful oil and natural gas to the Europeans. He has a monopoly on European natural gas and oil. Matter of fact, Europe is so dependent on Russian natural gas and oil that the Atlantic reports that if Russia cut off European gas, it would essentially be an act of war. But now the question is, what the hell does this have to do with Ukraine? Well, Ukraine had the unfortunate accident of finding massive oil reserves and natural gas reserves within its borders. Some of the largest natural gas reserves in Europe were found here in Crimea. So how do you get this natural gas? Well, Ukraine picked both Shell and Chevron to help develop these Shell gas fields so they can start selling gas on the open market to the Europeans, essentially competing with Russia. In 2013, Ukraine signed a landmark $10 billion deal with Shell Gas to discover and pull up that oil out of the ground. And you see this guy right here? That's the prime minister of the Netherlands. Now, why is this important? So we're all on the same page. Here's a chart of Russian exports in 2019 on the left, and here's the destination for those exports. As you can see, the Netherlands is 10.3% 
of all Russian exports. That's where they go. But if you click on this box, it tells you exactly what Russia is sending to the Netherlands. And as you can see, over 80% of what Russia sends to the Netherlands is crude petroleum, refined petroleum, and these hydrocarbon products. So Russian President Vladimir Putin had a choice. He could share the European market with Ukraine and let them dig up all that wonderful oil in Crimea or do something else. So he decided to do something else. And he seized Crimea. To what America is officially calling a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russian troops spreading out throughout the uh, strategic Crimean Peninsula. President Obama speaking with Russian President Vladimir Putin, apparently pulling no punches, although it is unclear what the White House can really do about all of this. Here's Russian President Vladimir Putin in 2014, a year after Ukraine signed the deal with Shell Gas annexing Crimea. Shell then ended talks with Ukraine on Black Sea gas. And as the New York Times reported, in taking Crimea, Putin gains a sea of fuel reserves. So with Crimea off the list, the Russian government really didn't have anything to worry about because they still held their monopoly on European energy. Except Ukraine had all of this. And with all of this, a new deal could be made. And I'm gonna stay in Texas. Here is current Ukrainian president and former energy secretary Rick Perry coming to an agreement to get Ukrainian gas and oil out of the land. They look so happy. Here is how the news media covered this monumental deal between Ukraine and Rick Perry, former energy secretary. What was Rick Perry doing helping to essentially land a lucrative deal for his own donors with the Ukrainian oil and gas company? According to a really wild new report from the Associated Press, quote, Ukraine awarded the contract to Perry supporters little more than a month after the U.S. Energy Secretary attended Zelensky's May inauguration. Also, a document shows that the only competing bidder, known by the acronym UGV, offered more than $60 million for the first phase of the project, compared with $53 million, that would be less, from Perry supporters. So now Vladimir Putin had another choice. Do we go again and do we share the European market with Ukraine and let them put billions of dollars of oil onto the market, cutting to their profits, backed by the United States, no less? What do you think he is going to do? We begin with Russia's invasion of Ukraine showing no signs of slowing down. The mayor of the southern city of Kherson says Russian troops have taken control of the city's administration building. This is video of Russian tanks in Kershaw earlier today. The Ukrainian government, earlier this week, I should say, the Ukrainian government has not confirmed the capture of any city. So just to be clear, let's look at how Russia is invading Ukraine. In red, you see Russian forces entering Ukraine from both from the south, from the north, and from the east. And here are the Ukrainian oil fields. Matter of fact, this is 80% of Ukrainian oil fields. And let me show you where Russian forces are invading. Yes, they're surrounding the oil. Remember, they already got the oil in Crimea, and now they're surrounding the oil in eastern Ukraine. And Putin has said, yes, Ukraine is Russia's to take and all its wonderful resources. Check out this clip. Putin also essentially laid claim to Ukraine. He said Ukraine is not just a neighboring country. It's an integral part of our history, culture. Modern Ukraine was entirely created by Russia, by Bolshevik communist Russia, to be exact. So now let's just recap what we've heard. Here are the three reasons why Russia is invading Ukraine. Number one, to control the seventh largest oil reserve and the third largest natural gas reserve in Europe to continue Russian dominance over European energy and to stop a possible major competitor from entering the European market and cutting Russian profits, especially since 40% of their profits depend on what they sell to the Europeans. Now, a lot of people are saying that it's about NATO and Russian concerns that NATO may invade Russia, but with the world's largest stockpile of nuclear weapons, no one is invading Russia anytime soon. Remember, they have the nuclear option. As a hypothetical, even if Ukraine was in NATO, any Russian invasion would be extremely unlikely and probably lead to the end of the world. Remember the acronym MAD, Mutually Assured Destruction. This is the doctrine of military strategy and national security policy in which a full-scale use of nuclear weapons by one or more opposing sides would cause the complete annihilation of both the attacker and the defender. Essentially, no one wins. So let's understand what we're talking about here. On one side, we're led to believe that Russia is afraid of some type of land invasion from Ukraine, and that's the reason why they're invading Ukraine. Or is it because the Russian economy can lose billions of 
of dollars in both natural gas and crude oil revenue if Ukraine becomes a major player on the European market. And also think about this. Who would the Western Europeans rather buy their oil and natural gas from? A hostile country like Russia or a friendly democracy like Ukraine? But what do you think? Do you think this is about Russian security? The fear that the Europeans are going to invade Russia in some land war? Or do you think this is about simple economics. If Ukraine becomes a major energy player, the Russians will lose billions of dollars. Let me know what you think in the comments section. My name is Nate the Lawyer, and I'm out of here. Peace.